Okay, so let's have a look at the face-off between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. If you have seen part 1 and 2, you know that the underlying question is who gives rain and rules the heavens? Baal, the weather god, or Jehovah, the savior of Israel? And the battlefield is Mount Carmel. Now first of all, we should ask ourselves why did Elijah choose this location? First because the Mount Carmel is known for its precipitations. So there is normally a lot of rainfall there. Secondly, it's a very fertile soil and a place of growth. Sometimes it's put in the same category as the seed of Lebanon, who are known for their strength and pride. Thirdly, it's a place close to the sea and almost facing Tyrus, and therefore make an allusion to trade and business. So all of this is a perfect place for God to show that He gives the rain and that He is Israel's strength and ultimately gives them economic success. But in order to restore Israel, God needs to defeat their idols. And in order to do so, God uses fire, which is a symbol of judgment in the Bible. So every fight has rules. First we have the teams. You have two teams. One team has 850 team members, which are the prophets of Baal. The other team has only two members, Elijah and Jehovah. Rules. The rules are as follows. There are two rounds. Round one demands that each party builds an altar with wood on it. Then each party has to take a bowl as a sacrifice and cut it into pieces to lay the pieces on top of the wood. Till now everything is quite easy, eh? But round two is the crux. They are not allowed to put fire on the wood, but need to pray to their God and then God needs to lighten the fire. And the thing is this, it's very easy for the false prophets to say our God is responsible for the rain and the prosperity of the land. But now Elijah says, well, if your God is so powerful to give us rain, let him demonstrate that he can light a fire. The result of the challenge should be, the God that answers by fire, let him be God and he will be the true God. So the prophets of Baal put everything into place, but nothing happens. So they start dancing while imploring their God, but nothing happens. So they, they start cutting themselves and so on. And I mean, it was so ludicrous that Elijah was even mocking them and telling them that maybe their God is sleeping or meditating or he's away on a journey. Well, anyway, in the end, nothing happened. And you know why? Because Baal was an idol. He was not even dead because he was never alive. He was just a piece of wood. But after this, Elijah stepped to his altar and he told them to put water on the altar and then around the altar three times so that there might be no confusion at all that God will really respond. And then he prayed a mighty prayer and God sent fire from heaven which consumed the whole sacrifice and the people of Israel who saw this they were shocked and they fell to their knees and worshiped the true God of heaven. You know today we have exactly the same battle. Many Christians turn away from God, from the God who is really there. They want to know special secrets from ancient gods and think that prosperity comes from the following 5, 7, 10 rules of a guru. And so many people are led astray from their faith in a God that actually is there and wants to help them. If this is you, there is hope. God wants you to repent and turn again to Him and find peace and blessing through a deeper relationship with Him. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you think we earned your subscription and you want to learn more from the Bible with Crosspaint, please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment below and give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. This will improve the video's ranking and give the possibility to many more people to see it. Thank you so much for your support and God bless.